In the last video, I showed you how to set your application up on Facebook. And in this video, we're going to now create uh, a page on our own site that will then post content to a user's profile on Facebook. To get started, I'm back here uh, logged into Facebook. Since we've already added the developer application, to get to it, we can just go down here to the bottom. I'll click on Applications. And I see under recently used, I see de the developer app. So click on that. And from here, I'm going to go to the developer wiki again. Click on Facebook Connect. Scroll down to setting up your site. And I'm going to look here on step three. I have this line of HTML, this uh, script tag. This loads in the actual. API. So this is the key part here. I've highlighted it. I'm going to copy. And now I'm going to go into Dreamweaver. And I'm going to create a new blank basic HTML page. All right. And right here, after the title, I'll go ahead and add in the script tag that I copied. So now, when this page loads, it's going to call uh, the Facebook API uh, JavaScript. So it'll load up, but we need to actually initialize it. So I'm going to add a new script tag over here. And to initialize it, I call fb.init. And this takes two parameters. The first parameter, which must be passed as a string, is our API key. And if you remember, we saw that in our application settings. So to get that, I need to switch back over to Facebook. And so once I'm back here on my profile, I can just go down to Applications, go to the Developer app, and on the right column, I see my, the name of the application I created. So I can go ahead and click on that, and I'm going to see my summary page here. And this first line is the API key, so I can just copy that and head back into Dreamweaver. So I'll paste that in there. The init method takes one more parameter, and that is the location of the uh, XD receiver file. I'm going to be placing this file in the root of my site, which uh, also contains the XD receiver, so I just need to type in XD receiver and no extra path information. All right. So now, when this page loads, it will then start initializing and constructing the JavaScript variables from the uh, file that's coming from Facebook. I'm going to save this right now. I'm going to call this fbtest.htm and hit save. Now this doesn't actually do anything. We need to uh, have a, some sort of event listener to to trigger uh, the rest of uh, the uh, API calls that we're going to do. So to make this easy, I'm going to create a simple button, and I'll say "click me," and I will give it an on-click event listener and for the function. I'll call FB Connect. I need to go define that function. All right. In here, so once the button is clicked, I need to ensure that the uh, whole uh, Facebook API has initialized. And they provide this uh, convenience function for us called fb.insure init and place a callback function here that will execute once the API has been completely loaded. Uh, so that way, if uh, in this case, if we click the button and the whole uh, API hasn't been initialized yet, it will wait until that's done and then execute the code in, inside here. So the next thing I need to do is call fb 
dot connect dot require session. Once again, this takes a callback function that executes well, when the session has been created. What this actually does is when it's called, the API will check to see if the user that you know is on this page is a Facebook user or not. If they're not logged into Facebook, a pop-up will appear and ask them to log in. Once they've done that and proven they're an actual Facebook user, pop-up will go away and then continue executing the code that we're going to place in here. If the user had logged into Facebook and then they came to your site, it won't be asked to log in, it will just simply execute. So it, it's a lot of stuff in there to keep track of and they did a good job of just making it a one-line uh, method call. Alright, so we know once the session has been created, we're now authorized to start calling the API. So the first thing I want to do is I'm going to define a message. This is going to be what's placed on the user's uh, stream. So I'm going to say Lumen Bright training is awesome. And then I'm going to pass that into the function that will actually then publish it. And that is fb dot connect dot stream publish. I will then pass in my message variable and that's it. For simplicity's sake I'm only using the message but the stream publish can actually take uh, quite a bit more uh, in its uh, list of arguments so you can do some more interesting things but for simplicity I'm keeping this simple message. I will save this and then I will upload it to my site. All right. So now, I'll switch back to my browser, and I will go to luminbright.com slash fbtest, and there we go. We have our basic page. We just have our simple button here, so once I click on it, I've already been logged into Facebook, so I wasn't asked to log in. However, the first time a user... Uh, uses the connect functionality on your site, they're going to be given this little prompt here that's asking uh, their permission for your app to talk to their account. Uh, if the user declines this, uh, there's nothing you can really do. So you may want to provide uh, some ex explanation about what you're doing before they click on the link. Uh, in this case, it's pretty simple. I'm just going to hit connect. Once it does that, we then get the prompt for this publishing to the stream. And it's going to say, publish this story, your Facebook wall, and your friends' home pages. And you see in the content here is the uh, string that I passed in the message variable. So if I hit publish, then it tells me post is now visible on the wall. So I'm going to go back, log into Facebook, and if I check out my profile on the test account here, I see the message from our Connect application. You'll also notice it set their status as well as a regular post in the stream. And if this test account had a lot of friends, all of the friends would see this in their home page uh, feed. So this is how you can start uh, taking advantage of social networking. And when you have a user that really likes your site and they want to engage with Facebook Connect, you know, they click on it, your site posts some content for them, and everyone else will see that it's coming from your application. Now this is just the tip of the iceberg for Facebook Connect because you could actually uh, create an entire uh, user account system uh, using Facebook uh, Connect, and you won't have you can use all your uh, own site profiles by taking info from Facebook Connect, or you can even uh, 
do fancier stuff by creating a native Facebook application that also ties in to your site. Uh, there's also a uh, action script API that Adobe has uh, uh, created with uh, Facebook. So you can, uh, instead of just simple uh, HTML, you can use uh, Flash and Flex to uh, do this type of integration as well. And if anyone wants to see more tutorials like that, just feel free to leave a comment on this video. And that'll be it. Thanks.